For a birthday celebration that was 200 years into the making, Ford came out with a present for the public. The 1976 Ford F100 Bicentennial Edition. Did you know that these existed? If you said no, you're not alone since Ford only made 2,237 of these patriotic pieces of rolling art. Powered by the legendary 360 cubic inch FE block combined with a C6 transmission, this truck was built for the men of yesterday. Available with patriotic plaid interior and a commemorative golden eagle on the dash, this truck represents all that is good in America. This vehicle has aged like a fine wine and the patina is unbelievable. If you ever considered using Penetrol to protect your patina vehicle, this is the episode for you. On this episode of Modern Greaser, we're looking at a 1976 Ford F100 Bicentennial Edition. Now, you may have never heard of this edition because there's only 2,200 of these made, only for one year, for obvious reasons. The owner of this truck actually owns the Squareback, which you saw in one of the other episodes of Modern Greaser, which is one of my favorite episodes because we filmed it multiple times. We pulled the engine out, we rode it through a living room, we installed it. So if you haven't seen that episode, make sure you check that one out. If you were alive in 1976, then you know that everything was bicentennial themed that year. Shoes, tissues, comics, arcade games, dirty magazines, Pez dispensers, stereo systems, clothing, pizza boxes, a garden tractor, which I actually own because my neighbor threw it in the garbage, chainsaws, condoms, makeup, zippos. Are you beginning to see how prevalent it was? It's no wonder why Ford dreamed up this little beauty for the 1976 model F100. So the owner of this truck drove from Tampa, Florida up to southern Georgia to pick this baby up sight unseen and it was a keeper. In the classic song 409, the Beach Boy sang, I saved my pennies and I saved my dimes. Well, they were right, because that was still a thing even in 1976, because in order to purchase the Bicentennial Option Group, you needed exactly $263.20. 20 cents? Well, that's two dimes you needed to save to buy that. The owner of this truck has gone through and put floor pans in, new carpet, new door cards, and what's really nice about this vehicle is that all these different little upgrades that he did on the vehicle didn't really cost that much money. So this 1976 Bicentennial Edition came with a FE block, which is the 360, so a 360, 390. So what's really cool about this truck, and I love a good patina truck, is this truck is wearing its original paint. But this is actually a golden, it's kind of like a yellow gold eagle that went down the side and the sun has really done some cool things to it. So if you're wondering why this truck that has such nice patina on it looks like it's so shiny, that's because the owner actually penetrolled the truck. So the penetrol actually goes over and kind of acts like a clear coat that goes on top of the paint and he did a really nice job and it looks really, really good. So the Bicentennial Edition came in this Bahama blue color that you see behind me and white. As you can see, this giant eagle that's behind me Originally was a yellow eagle before the sun did its work and turned it into this white color, but this is actually a decal. I like the patina look. The current owner was talking about doing some airbrushes. You should comment below on what you think should be done with that. What type of devotion would one have to have in order to purchase such a patriotic truck as the 1976 Ford Bicentennial Edition? Well, one owner of these rare trucks said that he crashed his truck and that the Bicentennial Edition was the only truck on the dealer lot that met his needs. Another part of the reason that these trucks existed in such low numbers is that Ford only sold these for a small portion of the 1976 year. The Ford Bicentennial Group could be added to the F100, F250, and even the one ton 350. You could even order one of these in a two-tone paint option with the roof color in either opposite Bahama Blue or Wimbledon White depending on the opposite body color. Dodge fought back with their patriotic release of the 1976 Dodge True Spirit, which is cool, but far more subdued and not really as good as the Ford counterpart, by my opinion. Chevy also didn't miss the patriotic bonanza. Wait, did I say bonanza? Yeah, that's right, because Chevy offered a 1976 bonanza into the mix, and it was pretty awesome. Don't forget the 1976 Kenworth F900 VT200 either or the K100 for that matter, and even Peterbilt threw their hand into the mix with their, okay, okay, okay. There are countless cool rare trucks out there, but they're really, really hard to find. If you can get your hands on any of these Bicentennial trucks, you are one bad man pajama mofo. If you have a classic F100 like this, you're probably wondering what size, tire, and rims, because you might want to get the same, saying, 
Man, that Bicentennial Edition looked great with those. So these are 31 by 10.5 R15s. That's the size of the tires. So this truck has Magnaflow mufflers with a complete mandrel bent dual exhaust out of the back. The steering wheel is actually an aftermarket steering wheel that's added in, but it has a really nice look to it. So this truck came with factory AC, but the old factory compressors aren't really that efficient anymore. So this truck is outfitted with the original air group setup. They, you do hear a lot of people putting vintage air, but this is the original air group setup is right here out of Tampa, Florida, and it runs really good and uh, nice and icy cold inside this truck, which is really a nice thing to have in an old vehicle. So the front of this truck has the twin I-beam suspension, and it's the same thing that you would find on an F-150 all the way up until 1996. So this truck actually drives and rides really, really nice. It's a fun vehicle to drive, and if you're gonna daily something, don't go try to daily in a truck from the 1950s or 60s that are a lot more work. A vehicle like this that still has some of the same upgraded features that you'd find in a car, you know, in the late 90s, that's a lot easier to daily because it has things like disc brakes, it has probably might have had the, the hookup for the AC that you can kind of update that. So it's it's a lot easier to kind of go through and upgrade things. If you if you find a good example like this one where it's not rotted out. Needless to say, the owner of this did have to still put in floor pans and there's still some different issues you have to worry about. But um, for the most part, I've driven this truck personally and it is a super fun vehicle to drive and it looks really, really cool. Thank you for joining us on a yet another episode of Modern Greaser. Make sure you hit the like button if you liked this episode. Make sure you hit the like button if you hated this episode. And be sure to subscribe to the channel. 